Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. As Brother Johnson mentioned during his prayer, I felt so nice to hear that statement that he made and the statement was that all this information which is part of bibliology and by implication all the information that we present here are scattered all over the bible and it is a difficult affair to go all over the word of god and search them very true, brother, very true. That is the reason why God has appointed Bible teachers. There are a lot of preachers. A preacher probably takes one verse or one word and elaborates upon it to present a message. Good well-prepared messages are necessary for the church as exhortation <clears throat> but also well-prepared bible studies are also necessary and bible study definitely has the problem that one has to go all over the scripture to find out related references then you collate them outline them and present it's a very time consuming job and i plead with all everyone who is in the class today i plead with all of you my dear brothers my dear sisters if these classes in bti have helped you then please pray that health and strength might be given to me and dr sanishirian to prepare these classes, prepare these topics. We would want many other teachers also to come and teach here. We have asked many. Uh, unfortunately, many of them are ready to preach, but teaching is a tough call and therefore many of them are not ready. But of all the brothers who are listening today, if there is any brother who has very thoroughly prepared any subject in the Bible, a Bible book, a biblical topic, a doctrinal topic, or any substantial study on any subject which would bless everyone, then please do contact me. If you can teach in English, wonderful. But if you want to teach in Malayalam, we would be happy to invite you to, to teach classes on Monday. Let me repeat once again, the offer of prayer leading in opening or closing prayer is open to all brothers. And if you are willing, please inform me. And the offer of teaching is also available to all brothers here. The only requirement, if you are, want to teach in Malayalam, we will put you in Monday classes. If you want to teach in English, we will put you into Tuesday classes. And we can offer you any number of classes, but there is one condition, one and only one condition, that the subject should be very, very thoroughly prepared as a Bible class. It may be a single class topic. It may be a multi, multi class topic. It should be well prepared. That is the only requirement. Of course, I am assuming that theologically you accept sola scriptura, sola fide, sola gratia, and sola scriptus. Uh, we, brethren, theological. Institute is a thoroughly conservative institute and all teachers who teach here must subscribe to that stand. We were covering bibliology 
the doctrine of bible or in simple terms what does the bible tell about itself though we start with what does the bible tell about itself we also gather all the information that might help us to understand the word of god clearly particularly the historical part in the last in the last two classes i had asked the question was the art of writing known at the time of moses see god the holy spirit used moses in 1500 bc 1500 years before christ and a lot of people ask brother johnson there are a lot of illiterate people in the 21st century do you mean to say that 3500 years ago the art was known and using historical information that is why i said we also go into histo history using historical information i made it clear that according to the best present information the art of writing was known 3500 years before christ i showed you some uh, written tablets so we will definitely use this kind of information that comes from outside the bible but which helps us to answer many important questions then another question i asked was were people aware of books and i gave the answer in the affirmative yes were libraries known if books were known were libraries known and i said yes i mentioned the massive ebla library which was made up of 20000 tablets and fragments the actual library was much much bigger than that but this much much only has survived and the ebla tablets were produced 1000 years before the time of moses which means libraries were known 1000 years before moses and the ebla tablets make it clear that many of those books were copies of uh, books from another library which was more than 1000 years older than ebla tablets i also mentioned in my last class that egypt where moses was given the best possible <coughs> scientific technical and other kind of training was a center of education was a center of writing and so many writings and books have been found in egypt that even today scientists have not been able to publish all of them they have all been read reading is one thing publishing them is a totally different matter last class i had made a promise that i will show you some of the books which contains writings related to the bible sorry <coughs> because of my own problems i could not pull out those books from the library uh, i have some five volumes sitting on top of that almira and i have a very massive volume sitting at a far away corner in an almira lord willing next week i will show those books to you so writings were known writings have come in plenty and then the question was were writings known to people of the bible and i gave you dozens of illustrations from the bible where books were known one of the things that i mentioned was chronicles of the kings of juda chronicles of the kings of israel and the third set i mentioned was chronicles at the time of esther all kings whether israelites or non israelites they had dozens upon dozens sometimes hundreds of scribes 
who wrote down everyday affairs in elaborate detail that is the background in which the scripture was written today i want to remind you that god had very clearly mentioned to his people as to what they should do with divine writings see divine writings or holy spirit inspired writings started coming through moses god the holy spirit used him to write the first five books of the bible and also the book of job moses and also people with moses were given clear guidance as to what to do with these books if you turn with me to exodus 24/7 exodus 24/7 it says and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people and they said all that the lord has said we will do and be obedient so whatever moses wrote they were to be read to the people bible is a book to be read not only in our personal life but also to be read in public and we see a lot of examples we see an example here it says that and read in the audience of the people and they all said that the lord said that the lord hath said we will do and be obedient this reminds one of the fundamental practices on which the brethren and similar congregational churches stand congregational churches are those churches which believe in the four solas sola scriptura sola fide sola gratia sola scriptus and also the new testament model of churches the new testament model of churches is shepherded by plurality of leadership and there are no bishops or no popes or no archbishops these churches have several fundamental practices and one of them is the scripture is read to people it is expounded to people and when the scripture is read and expounded the response is exactly what we see here in the life of israel they said all that the lord has said we will do and be obedient when the scripture is read and expounded to people then people respond yes we will believe it we will listen to it and we will be obedient whether they obey or not is the, not the question see man is in rebellion against god and therefore whatever he wants to do many times he is unable to do we see an elaborate detail about that topic from the holy spirit in romans chapter 7 what i want to do i don't do and what i hate i find myself doing it that's a different thing but what i want to do if that desire has to come then the scripture has to be read to people and expounded that's the principle on which the brethren stand and that's the reason why the brethren have this practice that everyone goes to the church with his or her bible you don't see this practice in many other churches you do see such practices in congregational churches and i want to remind you that particularly in india and that also in the southern parts of india the brethren have been the best model of congregational churches i don't say the only model because the lord has raised many many more new testament pattern congregational churches 
but the model are the brethren when it comes to denominational churches they have never encouraged their members to carry the bible read it so much so that many denominational churches in their pews they keep a bible with each song book i have seen it my own eyes so you don't bring a song book from home, home because your church keeps enough song books for everyone and more and many many of those denominational churches also keep bibles there so that you don't have to bring your own bible and some denominational churches give least importance to reading and exposition of the bible please remember the biblical model is and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience that means read in the hearing of the people and when bible is read in the read in the hearing of people and when it is read it is assumed when we read other passages it is assumed that an exposition was also given and when that was done they said all that the lord has said we will do and be obedient my dear brothers and sisters times have changed <clears throat> today we no longer have the ark of the covenant or the old testament temple today we have large number of congregations particularly the congregational churches they are known as congregational churches because they emphasize the fact that congregation is to be led by plurality of leadership and congregation plays an active role in the day to day affairs of the church the arrival of congregational churches in the 19th century also brought a change and the change was the congregational churches realized that we are living in industrialized era or the industrial era here not everyone may be free to go to the church at the same time and therefore congregational churches introduced multiple practices they introduced prayer meetings they introduced bible classes they introduced men's bible classes women's bible classes teenagers bible classes this was not to rob the church rather this multiplicity or plurality of ministries in the church came because congregational churches understood the need of reading and expounding the scripture to people they also understood that it is a biblical model and since it is a biblical model they wanted to follow it as it is and i want to remind you my dear brothers and sisters today hundreds of thousands of missionaries are working around the world even within india there are tens of thousands of missionaries who are the people sending these missionaries the congregational churches who are sponsoring these missionaries the congregational churches some denominational churches do send missionaries but please remember those are basically business enterprises i am not going into that lord willing we will pick up such things when we study church history because that is actually part of church history but i want to emphasize the fact that if there are tens of thousands of missionaries in india they have been sent by congregational churches 
they are being supported by congregational churches and congregational churches emphasize this statement exodus 24 7 where a servant of the lord picks up the bible reads it to the people expounds it to them and when that is done people say all that the lord has said we will do and be obedient with that in mind god <coughs> God encouraged many practices starting from the time of Moses. And as we read the Old Testament books as part of bibliology, we see many of these practices. For example, please turn to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 1. Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, Moses the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun, who was Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And what was one of the first things which Joshua did, one of the first things done by Joshua, And which Joshua himself recorded. Eighth verse. This book of Joshua 1. Actually, my references are Joshua 1, 1 and 2. And also eighth verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Thou shalt meditate in it day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it because when you do that you will make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success please remember with moses god himself instilled the practice of reading the scripture to the public and expounding it and after the time of moses the next in command was joshua and god himself very clearly tells him that this book of the law should not depart from his mouth how does a book come into our mouth How am I able to quote the verse? For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That is in my mouth. Okay. How is that verse in my mouth? I memorized it. Why did I memorize it? Because my parents encouraged and motivated me to memorize it. In fact, I come from a generation in Kerala where you did not have the evening kanyi, evening dalia, if you don't narrate all the Bible verses that you had memorized. It was a good practice, I would say. But the question is, how did it come to my mouth? My parents made me to memorize. Why did my parents make me to memorize it? They were following the biblical practice. And what exactly is the biblical practice? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. And if a book should not depart from our mouth, we should read the book. Because without reading, you cannot memorize it. So 
my dear brothers and sisters this practice of reading the scripture expounding the scripture rereading the scripture and memorizing this it is as part of christian practice it was all given by god at the time of moses they did memorize things even before the time of moses and we have a lot of biblical proof for example much before moses when enoch prophesied that prophecy was written down and transmitted for thousands of years it was not part of the canon but it was part of biblical messages it was passed on for thousands of years and when the epistle of jude was written jude quotes from it so the practice did exist even before the time of moses but at the time of moses god laid down some very systematic protocols one of them was write it down number 2 read it in the ears of joshua i hope you remember that verse number 3 read it to the congregation and when it was said read it to the congregation it was understood that they should the leaders should not only read but also expound it and finally when the scripture when god says book of the law should not depart out of your mouth it means you have to memorize it and we cannot memorize the scripture without reading it and we cannot read it without having copies so if you think that this practice of printing multiple copies of the bible and distributing it to people is a modern practice you are wrong this practice started at the time of moses i'm talking about the um the verbally inspired books the non verbally inspired but illuminated books written by god's children they were written and copied thousands of years before the time of moses as i said about the book of enoch the book which contained his messages his prophecies they were written down and copied and passed on for generation even at the time of jude that book was available even the story of um, job job was a contemporary of abraham and the story of job was written down by many many people many in his own family and probably his friend circle with elaborate details and finally when god the holy spirit inspired moses he used these original sources to compile the story the necessary parts of the story based upon guidance of the holy spirit so this practice of uh, producing non inspired scriptures and also inspired scriptures writing them down preserving them and producing their copies was common among god's people and though it was common among god's people at the time of uh, moses god turned that common practice into a necessary protocol write it copy it read it expound it and memorize it some of you may say brother johnson i have read the story of bible society and the story of bible societies that story says that bibles were not available there seems to be a conflict between what you are saying and that story no there is no conflict absolutely no conflict <clears throat> actually god's people always copied sermons exhortations and everything and at the time of moses god instilled 
copying reading expounding memorizing as a practice and we see this in many dozens of verses i am only quoting some sample verses that be being so how is it that about 200 years ago people were unable to buy a bible or 300 years ago people were unable to buy a bible there is a famous story the story of i think her name was mary a girl who walked kilometers after kilometers to buy a bible but could not get a copy and many of you who have read that story you may ask brother if she walked kilometers after kilometers and if a bible was not available how does that historical information fit with the biblical information that is a historical matter that everybody should know right from the old testament times copying the bible distributing copies was a common practice very common practice once the new testament books came the number of writings and copies multiplied number of bible expositors multiplied and therefore bible copies of bible also multiplied then in ad 350 approximately around ad 350 a roman emperor by the name of constantine he grabbed the church till then the church was independent autonomous he was a roman emperor he simply grabbed the church and brought the church under his control and all his pagan priests they became christian priests since he was a roman emperor this church was eventually known as a roman catholic church and the roman catholic church found that if the common man starts reading the bible if he reads the bible the roman catholic church cannot behave as a dictator and therefore the roman catholic church actively suppressed the printing distribution and reading of the bible eventually when the protestant reformation came then the roman catholic church at that time ruled almost all of europe they made a very clear rule that if anybody is found with the bible it will be snatched he will be hanged or burnt his wife and children will be sent into slavery and his property will be confiscated by the church and many many of the people who translated the bible into common man's language they were either hanged or burnt so much so if i remember it correct so much so that william tindale who was one of the translators he died in a country which was not under the roman catholics but finally when the roman catholics were able to conquer that country they dug up his grave dug up his bones and burnt it in public to teach a lesson to people that if you read the bible we will do the same thing to you that is the reason why mary could not have a bible bibles were not available and those who translated the bibles into common man's language they were murdered and bibles were confiscated and burnt but the biblical practice has always been make copy read it expound it and also memorize it i want to remind you 
<clears throat> that if bibles were not seen by people about 2 to 300 years ago that was not because a biblical practice was implemented but because a biblical practice was actively suppressed coming back to the biblical practice making copy reading it to people expounding it to people and encouraging them to memorize it came from old testament times god himself made systematic protocols and the uh, the people of god always followed it the church always followed it till the church was grabbed or captured by the roman catholics another practice which was instilled in old testament times we find in second samuel 8:17 second samuel 8:17 here we read and zadok the son of ahitu and ahimelech the son of abiathar where the priests okay that is known to us and seraya was the scribe the word scribe is known to us a person who writes what we should once again remind ourselves today is that these scribes they became scribes because god himself motivated people god himself gave protocols that the scripture should be read and the scripture cannot be read by people it cannot be memorized by people if they don't have copies that's the reason why scribes scribe is a person who writes last week i had shown you the picture of an egyptian scribe like stenographers of yester years they were people who specialized in copying so a scribe who is mentioned here is a seraya what did he do what did they do that we will pick up in our next class but let me once again remind you the congregational churches very firmly stand on that biblical protocol which existed even before the time of moses but which was instilled as an officially sanctioned practice and protocol by god we stand on those foundations distribute copies of the bible read it expound it encourage people to memorize the bible before closing my dear brothers and sisters let me remind you we need those little devotionals we need those messages where you take a single verse or a single word and and elaborate it but not sufficient we need people who would pick up scripture who would spend countless hours picking up information bringing together sifting and sorting dividing them into outlines and then expounding to people in closing so and congregational churches have once again given life to that practice dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel below this video there is a subscribe button please click it also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing 
Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.